And Michael, I feel like just from what I can gather, I feel like talking to our friend Jeff Goodman from Stadium about Kyrie Irving is akin to talking to you about James Harden. I don't think Jeff Goodman <laughs> is trying to hear it when it comes to Kyrie Irving. But Jeff, I'm sorry. I maintain that that 50 grand is money well spent. I, where I'm from, where I'm from, Jeff, <laughs> we live by code. It's called don't start none, won't be none, okay? And I'm sorry. I don't believe that fans to just have this right to say whatever they want and expect that, that players aren't going to give it back to them in whatever form they see fit. It happens to be Kyrie Irving, who is polarizing, to put it kindly, and who a lot of people just don't care for in general for a variety of reasons. But regardless, Kyrie Irving is a person. I don't think it's wrong for a person to, 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 give them, to give them that same energy back, to clap back to fans, especially when they're using that kind of language. Jeff, go ahead and tell me why I'm wrong, because I know you're like, eh, but it's Kyrie and he's what? A jerk? No, what you gonna listen. Tell me? Here's my deal on that. Like, I get it if a fan crosses the line. I totally get it. And, and they say something about your family or they say something uh, racist to Kyrie. I'm all for it. Yeah. Then you want to yeah. clap back? That's fine. We saw the video, guys. It was at halftime and a fan yelled, Kyrie, you suck. And Kyrie came back with, suck my blank. Mm -hmm. Like, come on, man. <laughs> like, I told Michael this. Like, I went to Providence college a couple months ago and they can't stand me there and half the student section was yelling you suck goodman and what did i do really? like i'm gonna go in the crowd i'm gonna i'm did gonna give him the really finger. no you're gonna smile you're gonna wave whatever That's like awesome. whatever you say Wait, yeah that is Kill awesome me. jeff <laughs> you got the student section was yelling at you that's fantastic Kill that's an accomplishment that's, i'm sorry i'm that was i'm caught up on that I mean, listen, <laughs> I, I know I've gotten it at times in different fan bases uh -huh. around the country, Texas Tech, Providence, Arkansas, wherever it is, I've gotten it. And never once, yeah, will I look back at who it is? Absolutely. I'll look back. And at Texas Tech, it was actually interesting. I'll look back, and the dude was standing there looking at me, saying, like, I'm mm -hmm. right here. And I'm like, all right, at least you got some you-know-whats to stand up and, and, and be known who you are. I, I just feel like Kyrie, by doing this, he may escalate the situation into something a lot worse than it could be or should be. Well, like like throwing water bottles at him? Well, it could be worse than that. Could be worse. Like some fan comes out I mean, of this. Look, look. I don't know what it is. But right. but you gotta again, you gotta be smart on this stuff. And and Kyrie, the word I always use to describe Kyrie, Michael, and I've known him since he was 15. And and I covered him here in Boston, I covered him at Duke, I covered him in AU, condescending condescending as a person and it's hard to like him because of that because i've seen how he treats people in the media other people now some days he can be incredible he is moody that's something when you talk to former teammates even current teammates off the record they will say that they, they never knew what Kyrie they were going to get and that made it difficult to play with him can I ask you a question, Michael, before you jump in? I just want to follow up with no, this. Ahead, is it ahead, possible, though? This is great. I love this. It, is I it, love this. I love is this. it possible to separate, you know, I would say separate the art from the artist. Is it possible to separate Kyrie's body of work and Kyrie, all the background that you have on Kyrie in terms of, you know, his personality and his temperament and what have you, to separate that from the principle that, that I'm talking about? He's not the first nor the last player to go back whether it's a, a gesture or words to go back at unruly fans and maybe his line is different. Why, why does the line have to be so extreme as you know, racial racial or family member? It's not going to change though. You suck everybody. Listen, I saw it at Duke with Grayson and Allen everywhere. He went it was you suck grace in this that tripping dudes, whatever it is. It, it can be black or white in this case to me. Again, I think it's got to escalate. It's got to be at a point where, yes, when somebody's going out for your family, when somebody's saying something racial to you, then I think, yes, you you have the wherewithal then to to clap back and say something or do something, tell somebody, get that fan removed so they never come back to another game. But I think if you're going at guys who say you suck, Come on, you're, you're, everybody's you're, you're saying more, that. You're more turned off by the halftime than you are. It sounds like you're more turned off by the halftime or whatever he may have heard from the stands. 
Is this in my, in my, yeah, the one, the, 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 the one, yeah, the, the one, one, the one, one where he's at it. You, no, but not that one. It sounds like you're really turned uh, off, Jeff, by the yeah. you suck, suck my. That one is yes. worse than, yes, the, because than the fingers. Yeah. You know how many times fan we we all sit in the stands too. How many times do you hear fans say you suck about a player? How often? Mm -hmm. All the yeah. time. Like you yeah. can't. The other thing. You can't get upset at that. It's like booing. Yeah. No doubt. Right. It's and nothing. another thing is, y'all. You know what? This is this Kyrie has done this before that, that that language, you know, he got that his first year in Boston. He got fined in Philadelphia because somebody said, hey, Kyrie, where's LeBron? Yeah, he looked yeah. and he said, hey, suck. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but here, here's the problem. The problem is you got a few things going on. All right. So Michael, what you're talking about with, hey, if you come at me, I'm gonna come right back at you. I think I think a lot of people can uh, relate to that. A lot of people understand that. But the problem for me is the NBA. The NBA gave him a light fine. This fine is embarrassing. Fifty thousand dollars because you didn't find him. Well, for isn't that collectively just, bargained though? Correct. It, if they go over that, he can. Still, he can. Yeah. They should have. They should have said more about it. They should have said more about it. He gave two two separate times during the game. He gave somebody the finger. After the game, he said he was going to do it again and he'll come into the uh, come into the arena. You go give me that energy. I'll give it right back to you. That goes against the whole spirit of what the league is trying to establish with. We are. Uh, I'll take a little quote. My, my, you know, my quote from the town. Not we are a national organization. We're a professional organization. This is a national basketball association. We are the highest league in the world and we're supposed to sit here. And, and look at one of our star players flip people off cuss about it and then say he's gonna do it again the next game and all you got to say about it is well some profanity and fifty thousand dollars that's a joke okay but so i think let, that's but, okay, kids, let, hey, let me kids emulate him that's the other thing okay. kids emulate okay, him well there's that yo yo hey you know what that okay you're right jeff no argument there and um so I'll try to say this without contradicting that. That's full stop. You're right. I mean, kids do emulate and that's something to be considered. What I was going to say, though, is it's like in a twisted way, Mike, when you talk about we're, you know, we're the highest league, NBA is the highest league in the world, highest basketball league in the world. This isn't what they're about. It's good for the game, though. I mean, in a twisted kind of way. Sure. I mean, this is great. This is great theater. I mean, it's like, oh, yeah, you know. Yeah. You don't you don't want that kind of language at your press conference. You don't want kids emulating that. But nonetheless, the dude put up 39 points and we got to wait until we got to wait until uh, Wednesday to see game two. All it does is add to the anticipation for Wednesday. So from a theater and a drama standpoint, I'm definitely here for it. At the end of the day, look, man, I, I just think fans in general. That's why I'm able to separate Kyrie from it more fans in general think they can say and do what they want. It's part of the reason why right. we got people gluing themselves and chaining themselves. You yeah. know, at, at Timberwolves games last year, we had people touching players. Yeah. They, they've long yeah. since thought that that ticket bought them a license to treat players like zoo animals. That's and right. Whether That's it's right. you can't do that. Whether, 100%. I, so, so you suck. You suck might be benign. I'm with you on that. I think the context of, of who, who Kyrie is and where he was playing adds to it. I'm not arguing with, with you with Kyrie Irving's demeanor and, and, and just the way he conducts himself. But in general, if they were saying the things that he repeated at the press conference, then the middle finger was also benign. When, and, are you going to go after him if they were saying if, if if fans are doing that to you, Mike? Are you are you really going to gonna go? You're going to flip them off? Yeah, you're going to flip them off. No. I'm jealous because I wish they did. They don't. They, they don't care enough about me, Jeff Goodman. I wish they did give me what they gave you at Providence College. I'm jealous. If somebody went after me, I'd be like, "Hey, <laughs> not appreciate it." Like, yeah, hey, you saw I didn't care. I mean, again, you heard it? it's comical. You watch, you to watch me. brother from another. Like, <laughs> thank you. I don't know. I mean, That's again, I, would be. I, I just worry about if Kyrie's doing it. We're going to start to yeah. see that in college from players. We're going to start to see mm. that in high school with players. Oh, I see it. I see it. I gave my team a speech the other night. Like, why are you celebrating everything you do? Basic ass layups. 
telling somebody you know they're why? too small. So I, I, I get it. No, I, I. That's why I didn't argue with it. Right, kids that are. What are kids doing? You know, they complain with every call now because why? They watch the NBA guys. All they do is bitch and, and, and moan to the refs after every call. You're seeing that now more in college than ever. Yeah, and I think I think also to to Michael's point. You know, I said this a, a bit yesterday. If I'm at a game, if I'm at a game, uh, I, I don't want to. I guess I can I can be somewhat entertained by the crowd around me a couple of one line a couple yeah. a couple But after a while I just don't want to hear you I'm, I, I get to see Kevin Durant and Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. I got to listen to you the entire game you. It's awful jumping on Kyrie Irving like go go sit down somewhere. I'm not offended. I'm annoyed I'm just like, <laughs> Of course, we all are you're not, right. you the three right. of us entertainment are. You're not the entertainment that I came here to see. But here's the thing, Jeff and Michael. I think Kyrie, he's taking it somewhere else when he said after the game. Most of the time, I, I look him straight in the eye and see if they're about it, and they're not. You know, and I, I turn around, look him straight in the eye. Most right. of the time, right. uh, I, I want to see if they're about right. it. Most of the time, they're not. And that, and that, and that's about saying no, neither are you. Right. And that's saying oh, okay, neither. Right. Are I was going to say, hold like, on, like bro. Kyrie, Kyrie's not going to fight a fan. Like, in that right. You know? no, he's not. Hey, Come on, Kyrie. You're not hey, Mr. Hey, tough it's guy. Like Ice Cube. Is there, is there a problem here? Right. 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 Come on, man. Hey, take, right. take that down a little bit. So, hey, Jeff. Uh, so, you're, go you're going to game two tomorrow, right? I am. Okay. What, what are you hearing? Because uh, I've seen at, at one point there were conflicting reports, and I think the last thing I saw was. You know, feeling good about Ben Simmons and his potential to make his debut later in this series as he's, you know, feeling better physically. I I just don't understand how Ben Simmons can be reasonably expected to contribute meaningful minutes under the pressure of the playoffs, let alone the fact that you haven't played with these dudes. Like this ain't pickup. Like how wait are we really going? I guess the alternative is just shut him down, but that might this is if you got Ben Simmons on the contract for three more years is the best thing for Ben Simmons given how he wilted under pressure in Philadelphia last year to debut him in the playoffs with a new no. team. No, it's a I'd rather just idea. go with what you got. Yeah, Ter terrible idea, but I think they also realize all right Ben Simmons. It's not like you worry about his shot. Right, like all his shots are coming with within five feet anyway, so it's not like his shots going to yeah. be off. He's yeah, an elite level athlete. If his back feels good, and again, listen, I, I've got a pretty good source on this one who had told me a month ago, all right, the plan was to bring him back, you know, three weeks ago. Then it got pushed back because, you know, his back wasn't feeling better. He was going to come back maybe for the end of the regular season. Then it gets pushed back again. Now, the latest I'm hearing is it's going to be game three or four in Brooklyn. That's the plan as it as it is today now can that change sure but i think they realize that okay ben simmons what he can give them from a defensive standpoint and honestly from a speed um and facilitating standpoint mm -hmm. those are those are things that they just don't have anywhere else and, and again you put ben simmons with kd and kyrie and you just say hey you know what push the hell out of the ball and go find kd and kyrie and defend and defend your guy. If he can do that, he's going to be a bonus even if it's 15 minutes. Hmm. So, Go ahead, Mike. how? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, so Michael and I, uh, last thing on this series, and then we'll get, I, I definitely want to touch base on the on the draft and even rookie of the year for that matter. Um, but Michael and I, yesterday, like even going into the series, Michael had the Celtics. Like, you know, what was it Celtics in six, Michael? Yeah, going into the series? Six, like, Celtics you know, full stop, six, Celtics in yeah. six. I, I I came in being like, yo, I can't call it, and I think Game yeah. One supported Neither. that. I was like, the only thing the only thing I did not see was a short series in favor of Brooklyn. I could see the Celtics. I respect them enough winning a five game series, and I could see, of course, like a lot of people, the series going the distance and it going either yeah. way. But after a, after a one point buzzer beating win on the part of the Celtics. What did you learn in terms of this series in general other than it's going to be fun? Do you do you think there's a clear edge on either side? I don't. Well, I, I do 
only from a standpoint that Marcus Smart is playing out of his mind right now. I mean, he, he won Defensive Player of the Year, but I don't even care about that. That's like irrelevant to me. What he's done running the team and even that last play, that, you know, that, honestly, that kind of says everything about how far he's come as a point guard because he would have yeah. jacked that shot. No question he would have jacked it. Earlier this year, last year, five years ago, eight years ago, when I first saw him, 15 years ago. But he made the right play. And and, and it ended up, obviously, providing the, the, the victory for the Celtics. So I think Smart and Hortford, to me, have been the difference. Like, we know we're going to get out of Tatum, for the most part. We know what, what we're going to get out of Jalen Brown. Yeah, Kyrie and KD are probably better, the two-for-two two swap. But the Celtics have to be markedly better when it comes to Hortford, Smart, some of those other guys. And they may get Robert Williams back, too. I don't think they'll get him back for game two, but I think they'll get him back about when maybe oh, Ben yeah? Simmons comes back. Oh, yeah? I think there's a chance. I think there's a chance he hmm. comes back in the series. There's a chance. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Now, uh, Jeff, uh, Michael Smith and I love a good draft. You, you want to talk to us about a yeah. draft, whether it's football yeah. or basketball, we love a draft. So before I ask you about the best player coming out this year from college basketball, Let's talk about the best player from last year. In, in other words, the rookie of the year. Who do you got for NBA rookie of the year? And it's tough, but I, I might go with Scotty Barnes, guys. I love Scotty Barnes. I, just, I love his impact on winning. That That's the difference for me. Like Evan Mobley and Cade are more talented than him. And I love Herb Jones too. But Scotty Barnes is an elite defender, not a good defender, an elite defender from day one and a much improved offensive player. I just, I love his DNA. I love everything he's about. And I, I was surprised when they drafted him, they took a little bit of a reach with him, uh, taking him as high as they did in the draft. But I, I think Barnes is the guy that I go with. I just, again, I, I don't think you can look at the numbers and judge his impact on winning. Let, let me piggyback off that. Cause I, yeah, I look at a guy like Jordan Poole in his development, you know, yeah. spent time in the G League last year and the player he is now. So you've seen all of these guys. Uh, these the finalists, the rookie of the year finalists aside. Yeah. Who's the NBA rookie that transitioned and developed at the NBA level in a way that surprised you, given what you saw of them in college? Probably Barnes. Again, probably Barnes. Okay, Barnes to be honest. Okay. Yeah, I just Cade. I knew what Cade was going to be. Evan Mobley. The thing with Mobley was I always questioned whether he was tough enough. And and I thought he was almost too nice a kid. He's been great in Cleveland. And they were really good this year. Much better than anybody thought they'd be. Um, you know, Herb Jones was good. A lot of it is, again, about fit. But Barnes, to me, was better offensively than I thought he'd be from the jump this year. Okay. All right. And then coming out, how about, how about the next guy? You know, uh, who, who's yeah. who, who are we going to be crazy about next year saying, man, I can't believe this guy is so good and he fit into the league so quickly. All right, so I'm going to give you a name that nobody's going to talk about. All right, like everybody's going to oh, talk yeah. about Jabari Smith, Paolo yeah. Bancaro, Chad Holmes, Carroll, right? yeah. Yeah, those right, are your right, top right. three. Jaden Ivey, Ivy, yeah. somewhere in that mix. Yeah. Those are your top right, four got, right now. Then you got, got the next tier. The next tier is the Keegan Murrays from Iowa, Johnny Davis, Wisconsin, Ben Matherin from Arizona. I'm going to give you a guy who hasn't played a game. He's from Canada, 6'4 guard, point guard, athletic, can score from all three levels, can pass, can shoot it, can defend. Shaden Sharp is his name. He, he re reclassed early at Kentucky, didn't play at all. Okay, so he reclassed, got on campus, and may never play a game for Kentucky. He's draft eligible. So there's a good chance when he figures out, hey, you know what? I'm definitely going to be a top 10 pick. And, and honestly, I don't think I'd let him get out of the top five guys. I think he could be the best player to come out of this draft. He is exactly what you want in a big point guard who's versatile, who, again, can get to the basket and score, can shoot it, can pull up from mid-range. He can push it in transition. I'm telling you, this kid, nobody knows about him. Shaden Sharp's the name to know. If he, if he sticks in the draft, it, the, the problem, well, not problem, but with name image likeness now, you've got guys being offered a million plus dollars to stay in college, mm -hmm. right? A million plus. Mm -hmm. Now, Shaden Sharp's going to get more than that, but like these big men right now, the Kofi Coburns, the Hunter Dickinsons out of Michigan,
the Drew Timmies out of Gonzaga, they're going to make more money if they go back to school than they would being on a two-way or being drafted in the 40s or 50s or not being drafted at all. You know what? I got another college basketball question, but I also want to ask you this. Who's the player? No, I'm sorry, not who's the player. I remember this might have been like when this when this show first first popped off. Uh, you joined us, Jeff. The Anthony Edwards draft, not last year, but the year before. Yeah. There were so many doubts about Anthony Edwards to, win, yeah. to to the point where I've said since then, he's the most underrated number one overall pick that I can remember, given what was said about him coming out of Georgia and what he's become in the NBA. Is there a guy like that in this coming class where you're like, there are some questions about him, but he's got something where if he if he gets if he figures it out, could be a, a, a budding superstar the way Edwards is right now. I mean, the guy that everybody's looking at I, again is Jaden Ivey with with his floor and okay. his ceiling, right? His floor is low, his ceiling's super high. He's not a point guard, or he hasn't been yet, but he is an electric electric athlete. Got a different gear than most dudes, and in his six four, you know, he, he can really explode to the basket. But again, you watch him and you're like, all right, he makes some poor decisions. I think a lot of it for Jaden Ivey is going to be where he goes and how they use him. Um, because again, you're not going to be able to match up athletically too many guys in the NBA with Jaden Ivey. He, he's that he's that talented. So Ivey's a guy that wouldn't shock me if he becomes an all-star. And it also wouldn't mm -hmm. shock me if he becomes like Monte Ellis, a guy who puts up numbers for a crappy team. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, last one I have for you. Uh, last one. Was, That's it. Uh, talking about now somebody conversely that we all know about. What's the deal with Ma Imani Bates in Memphis? Just what's the deal with that program in general? But that but that transfer uh, entry in particular. Yeah, I mean it just didn't work out with him and Penny. You know, part of it was they didn't have a point guard. So from the moment he reclassified, you know, he should have been a senior in high school. Should have went to high school to be honest, should have mm -hmm. not physically ready, probably not mentally ready as well. Um, and then things didn't go his way. Memphis started losing a lot of pressure on the kid. Kid's a sweet kid. He really is. You know, when you're on the cover of Sports Illustrated at 15 years old, life isn't going to be fair from there on, there on out in terms yeah. of expectations. Um, yeah. And he hasn't progressed as much as people thought. He hasn't grown as much as people thought. People are calling him the next KD. Well, his wingspan isn't the same. He's only 6'8". Uh, six nine maybe but he's gonna transfer um, he's got to put on weight and he may go G League I think the place to be look for him they're from M uh, Michigan I wouldn't be surprised if he plays for Juwan Howard next wouldn't be shocked hmm. oh, that's sexy hey Jeff Goodman man it's so fun talking hoops with you man NBA it's and great. college I have no idea why any student section in its collective right mind would heckle Jeff Goodman come on people Man, it's a national treasure. And Appreciate Providence. you, man. Thank you so much. Providence you of all it. schools. I, well, I called them lucky. I called them the luckiest team in the country. They were not happy with that. Yeah. Right. Oh well. Okay. See when I when I see when I flip people off, I do it as a term of endearment, like kind of like Roman Roy. Like I, you know, it's, it's my love language. So there's that too. Oh, that's you know? it. <laughs> Appreciate you, Jeff. <laughs> Later, guys. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.